So looking into our transducers, we are going to see that uh, there is an important part which is uh, needed as we are to work with our transducers that is part of amplification. As we do understand uh, from the word here, amplification. Let's start about the amplification. To increase, let's say, we talk of the voltage, we can talk of increasing the voltage to a certain value, which is the desired value. To increase maybe the voltage to the desired value. So that is the condition that you are having. It is supposed to be at a certain desired uh, value, which is uh, maybe on the output. Where, where is this coming from? When we talk of the transducers and the amplification is considered. Remember the transducers, they are working on their own. They have their input and output, whatever that you're going to have there. So the output signal from a transducer now, that output is generally a low value. It is something that is low of voltage level. So we talk of the thermocouples, uh, maybe any bridge network that you can have. It is having a low voltage on its output. And the amplification now is required because we need to increase. So therefore, requires amplification to the desired measuring range, which is the desired output that is given as of the transducer. So the amplification is going to happen through an operational amplifier multiplier circuit. Okay, so as I was stating here, that we are going to have the output. The output from what? From the transducer, the output from the transducer. The output from the transducer is to be amplified. Is to be amplified. Since we uh, saw that it has a lower voltage, and that's the need of us using what we refer to as an amplifier multiplier uh, using an operational amplifier circuit. All right, so that is using an uh, operational. All right, let me just have this one this way, using an operational amplifier multiplier. What are we going to have? This is what we need. We need to consider working with what? This. How is it going to help us? In what? Achieving the required voltage. So this is the circuit that you're going to have on a amplifier multiplier circuit, which is our operational amplifier circuit. It is going to be uh, actually an op amp that you're going to use there in the amplification procedure. Remember our operational amplifiers from our N4. Okay, so you're gonna have something like this. This is uh, the circuit diagram of what you're gonna have. So we're gonna have our reference, okay, which is the feedback. Uh, we're gonna have the feedback. And at this side, we're gonna have our multiplier. Uh, actually, this one is referred as the metering a resistor. This one is the metering resistor. It's just like a multiplier condition, but it's called what? The metering resistor. So this is the one that you'll be having there on the input. All right. So let's say we've got something of this nature. This definitely is going to be connected. Uh, then on the output, this is what we're going to have. Uh, let us just say this is what you are given, and this is your output. So that's our V out. And here we have got our input. That's our feedback. 
All right, considering our RF is to be given uh, as a feedback resistor and our RM is given as the metering resistor. So it follows that. This is going to amplify the output. Remember the output from the transducer. So meaning to say the input here that we are seeing, this input here, the input there is the output of the transducer. This is as a result of what? The output from the transducer that you are given there. From the transducer that you are given there, whatever that you are working with, is it uh, that you are dealing with a thermocouple, a bridge network, uh, those piezoelectric uh, crystals, anything that can be given as a transducer. Because we need to amplify the output. So that output becomes the input to the amplifier circuit, which amplifies it and gives us the output now. Oh, this is the output of the amplifier. It's this one, of the circuit, our multiplier circuit. So you must be careful there. So how are you going to get this? This one. How are you going to get that? This output is as a result of that transducer that you're dealing with. So it's something that is actually limited as we are to deal with our syllabus because they refer you back to whatever that you had back in your in your N4, N5 there. Talking of anything that you had, all the transducers that you had. So they can give you any transducer there. You need to calculate its output. That output becomes your input to the amplifier. It is amplified to give us the output where the output now is given as, which is our V out. It is given as V in into, uh, that is one plus RF over RM. So this is the formula that we can use now to calculate the output, which is the voltage there. So you can write this formula in any way that you want. Because you can divide by V1, or you can have this formula written this way, uh, V out, over V in. If you divide by V in, you're going to have 1 plus RF over RF. Talking of what? The gain. V out over V in. You can have it that way. Same formula. Like I said, our RF representing what? This is our feedback. Talk of what? The feedback resistor. Remember this, guys, from your uh, previous levels. Uh, then this is our metering. Uh, that's our metering resistor. So this is all about the operational amplifier multiplier. But as it has to deal with a transducer, meaning to say you have to understand about that transducer that you are given. We do not know what is it that we are given about that transducer. You have to consider the transducer that you are given there. So in some cases, um, they can use anything. You consider that issue of a bridge. The most uh, important part that they will actually have, let me just discuss about this one before we look into our examples. Uh, talking of the, the, the bridge network, which is when an op amp is used to amplify the output signal of a detector bridge. Let's just uh, talk of a detector bridge as our transducer our detector bridge. It's another part they are going to actually focus with in our syllabus. They need you to understand this because there are some calculations there that they can be taken from a detector bridge. So we are going to have this because we are saying, remember, this is a transducer that we need to amplify its voltage. So we need to calculate the voltage, which is from the detector bridge. So it is actually uh, of this nature. So I'm just going to have a second uh, presentation of our detector bridge uh, so that we can get rid of the formulas that we need there. So you're going to have our resistors, uh, R1, uh, R2, R3, and also having our R4, which is referred to as the resistance uh, 
of the thermometer because you're behaving at the thermometer in that case. Uh, so you're going to have something like this. All right. Then since you're dealing with the temperature, uh, let's say this is at a negative or temperature, whatever that you're given there, but you're dealing with a thermometer. Okay. The thermocouple concept. So meaning to say we are considering uh, the voltage to be measured, that's R1. Uh, then we're going to have our R2. Then this will be our R3. So this is supposed to be our R4, but we're going to write this as RTH like this, which is the thermometer resistance. Thermometer resistance. And our detector voltage in this case from the detector bridge. This is the VD that you call the output of the detector that you need. This is the one that you need as your output. Okay. So remember we say the output is our input at what? This one. The output from the transducer becomes the input to our multiplier circuit. So that is why we need to focus with that part. All right. Let's just stop here. It's going to allow me. I need to just take this. A little bit here. Okay, sorry for that. Why is it giving me stage by stage, guys? All right. Let's just hope I'm going to win because I need to put something here. So that is what you're going to have, actually. Then let's consider the supply voltage. We need to input our supply voltage. So the supply voltage is going to be taken this way. So there we are going to the supply. Okay, so this is your supply voltage. That's where we are having our VS, which is what? Supply. So the detector on its own, which is our transducer, is having its properties that we need to understand on its own. Yeah. Because as we're talking of the amplification, and the amplification has to amplify the output, like I said, the output from the transducer has to be amplified. So from this transducer, what is our output? I mean, from this detector bridge, our output, which is our detector voltage, is given as VD. All right? which is given by the formula uh, Vs, which is the supply into, that's going to be R1 over, take note if you're dealing with R1 there, you're going to divide these two, the sum of these two. So it's R1 over R1 plus R2. We subtract R3, it's going to affect R4. So it's R3 over the sum of these three, of these two, R3 and what? R4. So that's R3 plus R4. But remember, R4 is representing what? RTH, which is our R4, guys. Our resistance of the thermometer. Okay, let me just try to have these ones uh, here. So VD, like I said, is the detector voltage. That is our detector voltage which is actually representing what? The output of the transducer. Output of the transducer or the detector that we are given there. And this is the one uh, that you give us there. Well, what am I doing here? Transducer, that's a transducer there. This is the output of the transducer that will become the input when you are to amplify it. So you're going to talk about that. Then as you can see, the R1 there, the R2, R, these are just standard resistors. R1, R2, and R3. These are just normal standard resistors. Okay. Uh, then R4 there which is representing or can be written as RTH, is the one that is representing the resistance of the thermometer. That's our thermometer resistance. So as we are dealing with the thermometer, definitely there is need of us working with the temperature also 
temperature, this and that. Vs, the supply. Supply voltage there. So we talk of Vs, which is the supply. Supply voltage. So depending with the textbook, they can use V1, uh, V in. You can use that, but that's Vs there. So this is what you need here. All right, what happened with my bracket here, guys? What happened with my bracket? It's supposed to be like this. So we need to work with uh, this part where it is needed in order for us to obtain the VD, which is our detector or the output. This is just like our output, which is needed to be our input. So in calculating of this, sometimes you might not be given all the information, you might not be given all the resistors. Uh, it depends with the question that you have there. But at least for the basics, this is what you need. I'm going to add more information in case that uh, maybe it is needed there on a, a detector bridge. But just for the basics, even from our uh, engineering science there, we can understand this basic. Let me just add now before we look into the examples. Uh, sometimes, because this is to deal with temperature, remember, the more couple concept. The thermometer concept, I mean. The temperature is to be inserted, input, and it is changing up to a certain value. So definitely they are going to refer if you are not given this RFO or our thermometer resistance RTH. It can be calculated. So calculating... Uh, calculating RTH. It depends with the conditions that you might be given sometimes. Uh, but in following cases, it follows that RTH can be calculated because of the new temperature. Maybe you are given initial, like I'm saying, this is about temperature. So it will be given at a certain condition which is referred to as the nominal resistance at, at, at the original values. Then you calculate RTH, which is our thermometer resistance at a new temperature. At a new temperature. It has to be calculated. At a new given temperature, it has to be calculated. Maybe they are saying, you started at 10 degrees Celsius, and now you want to calculate at 80 degrees Celsius. That is the new temperature there. It follows that RTH will be equal to the change that happened in resistance plus its value of RTH as a normal, uh, the nominal resist, this one, the one that you had as the original value which is referred to as the nominal resistance which is referred to as the nominal resistance that is at the original temperature this one at the given original or initial let's just initial because if you deal with original something is fake original like that at the initial at the initial temperature initial remember that's your starting point initial started that is where you're starting from so if there's a change in resistance it means that resistance of the thermometer at a new temperature can be called this is remember is at a new temperature at a new temperature. So, what about the change in resistance? What does it mean? It means it has to be calculated. The change in resistance, depending with the conditions that you might be given there. The change 
and resistance can also be calculated from where? So the change in resistance can be calculated from the change in temperature times the nominal resistance, which is RTH initial. Our nominal resistance, the one that you started with, the one that you started with, times the temperature coefficient. So you're going to consider the temperature coefficient of that resistance. This is our uh, a linear temperature. Uh, that is the temperature coefficient of what? Resistance. Temperature coefficient of resistance that you'll be given there. This is simply the change in temperature, guys. As we know, change in temperature, it simply means what? Final minus initial or T2 minus T1. Or simply final minus what? Initial temperature that you're given there. Remember this. And this we talked about the nominal resistance is the resistance at what? At the initial temperature. So having the change in resistance that, that is needed, it will, it will give you now the what? Because this change in, in resistance is just needed for us to obtain what? RT at, at a new temperature here. Yeah. This is what you need. This is the formula that you need here. The change in resistance plus RTH at the initial, but you do not have this now. I mean, this change in resistance. So you must calculate it in case that you are not given. But if you are given, then there's no need for that. You just have to use your formulas. So these are some of the adjustments maybe that can be given that you just need to understand as you are revising your, your bridge network, which is the, the detector bridge. So you see now it was supposed to be something that we work with on its own to have a topic like detector bridge that is to have like on transducers, the detector bridge looked into this and that. But it's unfortunate that they won't give you that. They expect that you already know that. So you must be careful as you are to deal with your calculations. So all this is because we need to find VD, which is our output. So by determining that RTH, having it, you can substitute it there because you won't be given in some cases. If you are not given, then you have the value. What are you going to do? Using every information that you have, you can calculate your VD, which is your output. And that output, your VD, becomes the input to the operational amplifier model there it becomes the input like i said the output from the transducer becomes what the input so meaning to say from that detector bridge that we had the vd there will become our vi at the what when you're working with the operational amplifier now when you're now to amplify that because we need to amplify the what has to be amplified is the output of from where from the transducer just like that. So let's get rid of these questions and see, because they are going to have, even in exams, we are going to notice some of these examples that we are having now. They can actually be given as exam questions. They just change here and there, find this, this and that. A thermocouple has an output, take note, they are saying a thermocouple has an output of one millivolt per 10 uh, degrees Celsius as required to measure the temperature of a kelvin. Uh, that is a killing with a range of 100 degrees Celsius to 500 degrees Celsius. Like, okay, this is it, guys, from here. A thermocouple, this is not an amplifier, this one. This is a thermocouple that has its own properties there. But whatever that we need, they are saying now, determine a suitable feedback resistor value for an op-amp multiplier, for an op-amp multiply here an op amp multiplier okay to interface with the standard signal range of this op amp multiplier it has to interface with what a standard signal of one volt 
to 5 volts. We are talking of what today? The op, the op amp. The op amp. From the op, from, from the multiplier, this one. This is the op amp, this is this one. Our, uh, the one that is the purpose of the amplifier. So what is it that we are given there? This is the output to interface that. So within the range of 1 to 5, you're going to take the maximum there. 1 to 5. So what will be the maximum? That is 5 volts. So I want to talk about the op amp first, which is our multiplier circuit, the part of the amplification. So from the op amp multiplier, from the op amp multiplier, we can see that they are given the output. It has to interface with the standard signal in the range of one to five. So you're going to take the maximum there, which is five. So V out is going to be five volts from the multiplier circuit. If given that the metering resistor is a value from what? From this one. The metering resistor is given RM one kilo ohm. This is what we have. And they want you to calculate the value of the feedback resistor. So you see that in this case, RF, RM, there, there, and V, and V out, but V in is not given. The V in is the output from the transducer. So we have to figure it out from the output because from the, that is why I left this part of our thermal couple. So from our transducer now, which is our thermal couple, from the thermal couple, which is our transducer. From the thermal couple, I want you to understand this. What is happening? This is where they are saying it has an output, which is good because what we need from the thermal couple is what is the output. So the V out of the thermal couple is one millivolt per. It is one millivolt per 10 degrees so per each, per each, per each, per each one, like one. Per, like per 10, like when you have 10 degrees Celsius, there's going to be one. That is the condition. If it is 10, this is one. So they are saying it is required to measure the temperature of a kiln. I don't know, guys, how, how do you pronounce this? Kiln, it's a machine. Which is with the range of 100 degrees Celsius to 500 degrees Celsius. That is the temperature range. So you're just gonna consider the maximum there, which is what? The 500, the, the one at the, at the maximum, just like here guys, this is the starting point, just like output voltage, one to five, you work with the maximum. So what is the maximum temperature there at 500? So meaning to say at 500 degrees Celsius, what, what was the output of the thermocarpo, our transducer? What was its output? That is the question. What was its output? So how do you calculate? It's one pillar. It's like, uh, how, how, can, how can I explain this? It's like you are given something. When you are talking about one pair, this, it's like one corresponds to, it's like this, one millivolt corresponds to 10 degrees Celsius. What about at 500 degrees Celsius? What about at 500 degrees Celsius? What is the corresponding voltage? So you can simply divide 50, uh, 500 over 10 times what? Times the one millivolt. So this is going to cancel and you're going to get 50 millivolt. I don't know how do you understand this pair concept, this one. The way that you understand it, guys, calculate your output voltage there, okay? As you have your output voltage there, because it's just like one milli pair, this 10. So it's 10, 10, 10. So how many, how many 10s do we have in this 500? So it simply means 500 divided by 10. We have got what? 50 tens. But this, remember, it's one pair. So you have to multiply now the 52 to one millivolt. So it will give you 50 millivolt. Yes, I, don't know, I don't know how to understand this one. Uh, use any concept that you understand there. That will be your V out from what? The thermocarpal, which is our transducer. And what is going to happen with this V out? That V out, the output of the transducer has to be amplified. So it is the one which becomes our V in of what has to amplify. What is it that has to amplify? 
our amplifier multiplier, which is our op amp. Multiplier, uh, second, this one. So the output there is your input. I hope, guys, this one makes sense. Let's just hope it's going to make sense. So this here becomes our input. So input is equal to V out of the transducer, which is 50 millivolt. The op amp multiplier has complete information. So what is our RF as we are given in our question that we are supposed to determine the suitable feedback? That is it. So the so the, the here you work with the condition. If it was a bridge like this, the one that we had there, if it was a condition that you had to deal with the detector bridge, you were going to calculate what? You are going to calculate the VD, which is your output, and that output becomes becomes your input, just like that. That is the condition. All right, so let's consider this, guys. We can simply calculate this because we have got our calculations from our op amp multiplier. I said uh, V out can be given as V in into one plus RF over RM. Uh, or you can use it as V out over V in. It's up to you. Over RM. And from this, we need to calculate what? RF. So let's make it the subject. So you can divide by V in both sides. That's by V in. By V in so that this can cancel. So that's that we're gonna have V out over V in is equal to this, is equal to these guys. So definitely let's take this one to the other side so that it can be it's gonna be a negative one. So this will be equal to this plus RF over RM. What is that we need? We need RF. So simply remove the RM. How do you remove it? I'm gonna multiply by RM this side. This side you also multiply everything by what? by RM so that this can cancel. So this is the formula for RF. So RF can be calculated as RM into V out over VN minus one. In our mathematics now, that is where we play, that is where the mathematics partner, making of subject or formula, then after the simply substitute RM is given one kilo ohm. So that's 1000 into V out, which is five. Remember your V in, one that you calculated there from your thermocouple, it was 50 millivolts, 50 times 10 to the exponent of minus three, minus one. So it is not going to be a direct equation that they just give you information as it is as of our N5, no? No, N5, it was direct. They just give you everything. Cal calculate this output. You just check your formula as it is. So this time it has changed. So you're gonna multiply it everything uh, that was going to give us 99,000 ohms. So that is simply to say, divide by 1,000 here, remove these three zeros, it's going to be 99 uh, kilo ohm. That will be 99 kilo ohm as our RF. The feedback resistance now there. So this was it for this question. As you can see, it, you need to understand your questions that you're given. You need to understand the information. So let's think uh, along the output first because that output is needed as your input. On another question you were given, in this case, a detector bridge. Okay, this is the one that I was explaining there, so it's going to make sense. With this question that we are given, they are saying a detector bridge is composed of three standard resistors, each with a value of one kilo ohm. Remember when we had our detector bridge, it had the standard resistors, R1, R2, and R3. So they gave us those standard resistors from a detector bridge. Standard resistors. So let's just take our information. So there is the information. There, there are two things here. There are two things. Our transducer, the detector bridge. That is the detector bridge. We're going to talk about that first on, on our detector bridge here. We're going to talk about this first. All right? We're going to talk about this on its own. If we are to consider what we are given on our detector bridge. They are saying there are standard resistors that are given there, 
which is of one kilo ohm, meaning that they are the same. R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R3. Remember, it's from R1 to R3. Those are the standard ones. The R4 represents what? The thermometer resistance. So you're not supposed to confuse that. And the resistance thermometer they gave us with a nominal resistance of, that is the starting point. Okay? That is at what? So this is the nominal value that we are given there. Is equal to one kilo ohm at 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature coefficient of resistance Thermometer is you're given the temperature coefficient. Like I said, it can be like that. We are given this temperature coefficient. We're given uh, 0, 0.001. Uh, that's ohm per ohm per degree Celsius, like that. And the supply voltage to the bridge, to the detector bridge, this one. Not to the thermocouple, no. To the detector bridge, the supply is 3 volts. This is what you are given there. This is what you have. And they are saying, calculate the detector bridge voltage, meaning to say you're supposed to calculate VD. When the temperature at the thermometer is 100, that is at 100 degrees Celsius. This has nothing to do with amplification, the amplifier, because the amplifier is part B. Calculate the suitable resistor the value of the op amp. We are now talking of the op amp. Ah, this one is just on the detector. We are not about the op amp. That's the detector bridge here. On its own. The one that we talked about here, our detector bridge. Remember what I said about this detector bridge. It can be used. Now, amplification process where the output has to be amplified. And what is the output? The output is your VD. So they are saying calculate that VD. Okay, let's have our formula for VD. So VD, we saw that this can be calculated as, okay, in our calculation, we saw that uh, VD can be given uh, from the formula, the supply, Vs or supply, into R1 over R1 plus R2 minus R3 over R3 plus R4, where our R4 is representing what? Is representing... RTH, which is our thermometer resistance. So this is supposed to be at 100. If it was, guys, be careful there. Be very careful. If the question was just calculate this at a temperature like what you're given, normally as it is, because this information is at 20 degrees Celsius. So VD was going to be calculated. You're just going to substitute everything there. You calculate your VD. But it was going to be at because you are using the thermometer resistance being at 20 degrees Celsius, but they say the VD at 100, meaning to say to have VD at 100 degrees Celsius like this, okay? So to have a VD at 100 degrees Celsius, it means we are supposed to calculate first Calculate first uh, RTH at that temperature, which is our R4 in that case. Okay, remember our RTH is our R4, which is our thermometer resistance. You have to calculate it at 100 degrees Celsius. At that temperature that you're given, before it was at this. So this is where now I was talking about these guys, these formulas to say sometimes they... Do it like that. Calculating RTH at a new temperature. We need the change in resistance plus the nominal resistance. But we do not have the change in resistance. We are given the temperature coefficient and the temperature part. Because the temperature there, it started initially. This is your T1. And now we are at T2. So the change in temperature is there because the temperature has changed. So as we saw, we are going to need that. 
RTH, this one. We have to calculate it first. So RTH, first we saw that we're going to need the change in what? Change in resistance for us to have RTH. So the change in resistance is equal to what? That is the first uh, part. Now. We saw that it's going to be uh, RTH, which is the original, uh, the, uh, the nominal value at what? That is the nominal value, nominal resistance, this one at what? At 20 degrees Celsius times the change in temperature times the temperature coefficient. So this is what you're going to need as of our formula. So with this, guys, we're going to substitute what is the nominal at 20 degrees our RTH is given. Nominal value, 1 kilo ohm. So that's 1,000 times the change in temperature. As I said, this is even from our N, N1, N2. We talked about change in temperature. Final minus what? Minus initial. Minus initial. For recap, because we might have long time with this uh, N6, maybe you stopped some time, then you now you have to continue. So these formulas, you have to find a recap. You can have it this way. So it's simply a change in temperature, T2 minus T1, or final minus initial. So that's the 100 minus what? 100 minus 20. Change in temperature. Times our temperature coefficient of resistance, which is given as 0, comma, uh, that's 0, comma, 0, 0, 001. So with this, you are going to find the change or to determine the change that happened in terms of resistance because the temperature has increased. It means the change in resistance, this one is an increase. It was going to be 80 ohms. That's an increase. The change that happened because the temperature increased. You can see that the, this change is also an increase. So if it is an increase, therefore, our RTH can be calculated. Remember that I said RTH will be what? Change in resistance plus that nominal value. So the change is positive as it is. So that means, therefore, our RTH was going to be what? Uh, change in resistance plus RTH nominal value, which is our nominal resistance there. And original at the initial temperature of one of uh, 20 degrees when it was initially at 20 degrees what was it it was 1000 so we're going to add the change that happened right now which is an increase plus the 1000 that we had previously it was going to give us 1080 ohms so this is our rth at 100 degrees Celsius. when this is increased to 100 the resistance was going to be this because of the change that happened in resistance so in order for you to have the detector voltage you say at that temperature you have to consider they said at which temperature find the resistance that corresponds of the thermometer at that temperature this is the only part that was limiting us in order for us to, to have the vd because everything is there guys with this you cannot substitute. With this, you cannot substitute as it is. Here, our formula, remember, our VD is equal to what? So the detector voltage, okay, just because of this first, let me just write here. Our detector voltage was going to be Vs, the supply. We are given everything there. Supply is three volts. So that is three into what? R1 over R1 plus R2. Remember R1, R2, R3, the same one kilo ohm. So it's R1 over R1 plus R2. So that's R1, which is 1,000, one kilo ohm. That's 1,000 over 1,000 plus 1,000. Remember R1 and R2 are the same. Minus R3. R3 is also 1,000. Remember, initial level from those values that we had. That is 1,000. Everything over what the RTH is the one that is affected, which is our R4. It is affected because it has to be at the corresponding temperature there. 
at the corresponding given temperature. Be careful there on that one. You are a TH. So R3 was there. This, remember, it's R3 over R3 plus. So it's going to be 1,000 plus. This has to be at 100 because this is given at what? At 100 degrees Celsius. So we are going to need RTH at 100 degrees Celsius also, which is the one that we calculated here. That was 1,080 at 100 degrees Celsius. That was 1,080 at the new temperature that we are given at corresponding corresponding value there at 100. So that's it, guys. You have your detector voltage. That's our VD, the first part of our question. So our VD was going to be calculated. That was going to be 0, uh, 0.05769. Uh, two, three, something like that, which we can just write in millivolts. Uh, to convert to millivolts, just going to multiply by 1,000. That will be one, two, three here. It, millivolts, so it's going to be 57,692 uh, millivolts. That's if you want to write it as millivolts like that, we can just write as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,0, 7, 7. This one is going to change in like that. You can even write it that way. Don't mind. It's fine. So you have your detector voltage. That was your first question. So you see, you are working. The, the part is on amplification, but they you are now back to the transducers, the de detector bridge. What is it about that detector bridge? You calculated from this detector bridge. This this was of our detector bridge. Everything. Our VD is there. This one. All right. No problem. Let's move on. So take note of our VD. I'm going to need this value. All right. So let me just take this one. I'm going to need this one out. So guys, be careful there. Be very careful how the questions are given as. All right. So no problem. So from the first item, uh, A, we calculated this at uh, 100 degrees Celsius. We got that our VD, which is our detector voltage, our output from the detector bridge, is 57,692 millivolts, one that you have there. Now they are saying on B, take note on the B part. We are now supposed to calculate a suitable feedback resistor. The moment we talk of the feedback resistor, we think of what? The op amp, or an op amp, should the output of the what of the detector voltage above be employed in a one volt to what five volt amplification network? Take note, they are saying uh, in this part of our detector that one that we got it is supposed to be put into employed in an amplification network when it is being employed in an amplification network what is it that we are thinking we are back to exactly here our amplifier circuit our amplifier multiply that is where it is employed in within the interval of the output of the amplifier that they are giving us there to say in within one to five. So they are saying calculate. So this is for B. Calculate what? RF, the feedback. The metering resistor has a value of, so RM is given there as one kilo ohm. And the output voltage must be five volts at, heck not, at what? At 100 degrees Celsius, at the out, at the at the maximum temperature that we have, the final temperature, which is 100, like what we had previously. Remember, working with started with 20, now it is at what at 100. So they are working with the previous condition to say at 100, as we are having the output of what of five volts in within one to five. Even if they did not give us, we're gonna take that, which is five volts. This is the output of what guys. Here we are talking about the amplifier circuit here. 
we are on the multi uh, that vo uh, that multiplier that we had, which is our amplifier circuit. For the amplification to happen, we need the input. What is our input? The input is the output that we had from the detector. Like I said, the input to the amplifier is the output. So since we are working at 100 degrees Celsius, so we have VD corresponding at what? At 100 degrees Celsius, at the same temperature that our output of the amplifier is at. Remember the year? We are given 5 volts at what? At 100. So the V in is your VD, though that detector voltage that you calculate from the trans the output of the transistor becomes your input to the amplifier. So that was 57.692 millivolts. So with this, we can now have what? We can now have our output as we had. I mean, we can now have our RF as we had in our previous question. Remember, as long as you're dealing with the amplifier circuit, it follows that V out over V in is equal to what? We ended up with 1 plus RF over RM, right? Remember, it was like this, guys. V out is equal to V in into 1 plus RF over RM. Then we're going to divide by V in. Then we transpose the 1 to the other side. We ended up with V out over V in minus one, then we multiplied by this RM, if you still remember. So it was RM is equal to what? It is equal to RF, just like what we had on our previous manipulation. This is how you're going to manipulate your question also. I mean, uh, for this RF, then you can substitute your values because you've got these values. So the feedback was gonna be what RM, the metering resistor is given. So everything is now there. You can calculate this metering. 1000 into what v out which is a uh, 5 volt over vn which is the output of the transistor our detector that becomes our vn which is 57 comma 692 times 10 to the exponent of minus 3 uh minus 1 so guys let's hope with the emphasis that i have put in this video is going to help you to answer any question because they are going to ask these questions 10 marks 12 marks Yes, they, can, they are going to ask these questions about this type of a question and even the previous one. So that was going to give us RF in that case, which was going to be 85,667,128889 in ohms. We can even convert this to kilo ohms if you are to just divide by 1,000. So it means our RF was going to be 85,6 six uh seven all right there's no effect there uh that's in what in kilo ohms it can be like that so you have to be very careful very very careful in your simplification uh what are you given the information it is or not so under exam condition now they're not going to ask you like this uh, like item a b they can just ask you straightforward like this calculate the feed the suitable feedback uh, resistor value of the op amp should so now you have to figure out you have to figure out what is it that i'm supposed to work with first i'm supposed to work to calculate the detector voltage which is my output that becomes my input to the what to the amplifier circuit so you have to work with the type of question but with this information we can answer uh, many questions on our transducers working with what amplification as we are to deal with our amplification this is what we need so more questions to come as we are having our revisions at medicine african motives till we meet again